things are getting more lively and more interesting. A few hours ago in this forum, we dwelt on the conservatory orders. We know that come tomorrow, a three-judge bench of the High Court will be giving its verdict whether to extend the conservatory orders or whether to set them aside. Regard this legal team wants the court to extend the conservatory orders while Professor Kipuri's team wants the court to set aside the conservatory orders so that Professor Kipuri Kindiki can be sworn in. The three judgment of the High Court will be giving its verdict tomorrow. And I did explain in this forum that the three judge bench can decide to extend the conservatory orders just to kill this notion that they are biased, to kill this notion that they are leaning towards Professor Kithure's side. And should they extend the conservatory orders, that will not mean the court will eventually rule in favor of Rigadi Gashagwa. Yes, the court can extend the conservatory orders, but eventually, when they'll be done with the hearing of that case, they might eventually render a very bad ruling to Rigadi Gashagwa. So to Rigadi Gashagwa supporters, they should not celebrate in the event the court decides to extend the conservatory orders. Let's now have a look at what senior counsel Ahmed Nasir Abdullahi is saying. Ahmed Nasir Abdullahi, it's extremely rare and very unusual for a court to spend enormous time and resources on the discharge of a conservatory order or injunction that was issued ex parte pending the hearing of the application Interparties. It is actually unheard of. Normally, the court will hear the application interparties and then grant the conservatory order, injunction, or discharge it pending the hearing, determination of the suit or petition. Once a court decides to hear an application to discharge the conservatory order, injunction issued ex parte as a standalone application, then it isn't rocket science to state emphatically and authoritatively that it will indeed discharge the orders. Honorable Rigad Digashagwam should not be surprised when the court discharges the conservatory orders case unless the court of appeal stays the high court proceedings. In a layman's language, I mean, Nasir Abdullah is just trying to say that come tomorrow, the three judge bench is most definitely going to discharge the conservatory orders. And should that happen without the court of appeal staying the high court proceedings, then nothing will stop the swearing in of Professor Kithure Kindiki. But it's also important for Kenyans to understand that this is Abe Nasir's interpretation. It does not mean that this is now the position of law. This is just his own interpretation. Other lawyers can also interpret it differently. I want us to dig deep into this for Kenyans to understand what's happening behind the scenes. If you are watching us but you have not yet subscribed, subscribe, give the video a like. Let's proceed. Yes. So tomorrow, the three judge bench of the High Court will give a ruling. And so far we have seen how the proceedings have been going on. Regard this legal team, 
they have come out as a team that is very disparate to drag these proceedings. They want to delay the proceedings. I think that came out very clearly and that is not debatable. And maybe regardless legal team are attempting to delay the proceedings because they know they don't have a concrete case. They don't have a substantial reason as to why they are challenging Rigadi Gashagwa's impeachment. Listening to Rigadi's legal team, they have been hanging on two main issues, public participation, and now recently the mere fact that the Senate impeached Rigadi Gashagwa in Rigadi's absence. Those are the two main issues Rigadi's team is hanging on to. Yesterday, the Supreme Court gave a ruling on the Finance Bill 2023. And in the Finance Bill 2023, if you listen on how various lawyers are arguing on that ruling, then the lawyers are saying that the Supreme Court lowered the bar on public participation. We know regarding this team, have been hanging on to that issue of public participation. If you compare the public participation that happened on the Finance Bill 2023 and the public participation that happened on regarding Shagwa's impeachment, then the public participation that happened on regarding Shagwa's impeachment was almost a thousand times than the one that did happen during the Finance Bill 2023. The Supreme Court did find that indeed adequate public participation happened on the Finance Bill 2023. If that was the verdict coming from the Supreme Court, that adequate public participation happened on the Finance Bill 2023, compare that to the public participation that happened on regard this impeachment. So on that issue of public participation, regarding this legal team might not win that. The court will eventually rule that indeed adequate public participation did happen. And then on the issue that Rigadi was not given a chance to, be, to appear before the Senate, that's also laughable because the Senate we are all Kenyans and we saw what happened. And some of these things are common sense. Rigadi was given that chance to appear before the Senate, but he chose not to appear. So again, on the issue that he was not given a fair hearing, might not hold any water. Because after all, he also did submit some written submissions. So all these issue of public participation and fair hearing might not hold water at the end of the day. Those are Rigadi's main points. Having listened to all that, I'm fully convinced Rigadi Gashagu has no strong case against his impeachment. And even the judges might also just find it so. This is why Rigadi has been really trying to delay the proceedings. And according to Rigadi, he hopes that upon the conservatory orders being extended, then he can use those conservatory orders to remain in power as they delay and drag the proceedings. And just as I did explain in our earlier analysis, Omari Dunstan also alluded to that fact. To regard the Shagwa supporters, it's true they get easily excited. Small things do excite them. I remember when uh, the, this lawyer, Ongoya, was speaking at the Senate, regard these supporters were seriously celebrating. And in this forum, I did explain that they should first listen to both sides that it was too early for Rigadi Gashago supporters to start celebrating. And even come tomorrow, 
whichever the ruling, regarding Ashago supporters, should avoid early celebrations. The die is already cast, and nothing will save regarding Ashago. That's my honest interpretation of the whole thing. And just as I've been explaining here, before William Ruto started the impeachment on Rigadi, he looked at his numbers in the National Assembly, in the Senate, and his standing in the courts. And he got a positive feedback from all those arms of government. So Rigadi Gashagwa is just trying to chase after the wind. Eventually, even the courts might not save him. Let me stop it there. In case you are watching us but you have not yet subscribed, subscribe, give the video a like. Let's meet in our next analysis. Thank you.